to Six Strings and Things, a guitar adventure. The place for all things guitar and gear. Here are your hosts, Chris, Jesse, and Robert. Welcome to Six Strings and Things, a guitar adventure. Your fortnightly webcast for all things guitar and gear. I'm Chris. And with me tonight's Jesse. Hello. <laughs> wow, it's, it's uh, been a while. You know, I apologize to our viewers that we it's haven't a, been so regular and it's clearly a sleepy, out of practice. It's a sleepy night. I've got Bailey's in my tea here, so this should be a good one. <laughs> uh, yeah, yes. Well, yeah, long day and uh, definitely out of practice. Uh, recording in the new office here, so if you see a different background, you should see a different background. That would be why I moved into a different office. Painted the wall, hung guitars. There we are. Check that out. Yeah. Makes for a pretty nice backdrop, actually, for the show. It really is. I have to work on well, mine now. I've got, like, the yeah. tool thing and <laughs> one guitar back there. Oh, that's all right. I got, like, this <laughs> mess on this side over here that I should probably have cleaned up before we started, but whatever. So uh, we should probably talk about guitars since this is a guitar podcast. Uh, <laughs> so, Jesse, what have you been up to this week? So, um, well, as far as actual practicing goes, it would be uh, returning to some 80s hair metal roots and just playing with that, specifically some White Lion. I love Vito Brada. Uh, if anybody hasn't heard of Vito Brada, and this guy, you know, he's like the coolest of the Eddie Van Halen sort of sound alikes, but just so kind of the pinnacle of that style of playing. And uh, I know that's really retro now. <laughs> But he's just really tasteful. So, I mean, very good melody and all that. And it's kind of too bad the rest of the band sucked. But, uh, yeah. Uh, what else? Some jazz chord inversions. You know, still working on those things because I won't have them down until I'm gone, probably. And then the last thing was pretty much mutilating my poor guitar, <laughs> which we should probably talk about a little bit later. All right. Good. I guess the show topics is we're running a little unplanned this week. Uh, yeah. So, <laughs> how to beat up oh, on your guitar? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm giving away the secrets of the show here. Uh, yeah. So, you know, speaking of '80s metal, before we get into what I've been doing, have you ever listened to Steel Panther? Steel Panther is that like a real band or is that like yes, a, it's okay. a real band. It's like a. I guess I would call them an. an 80s hair metal parody band they're yeah. modern yeah oh oh they're modern okay yeah they're new this uh this guy satchel who plays guitar for them writes um a column in guitar world okay and they are shall i say maybe not appropriate for small children <laughs> or even um, medium-sized children <laughs> yeah in fact and i won't go into the two and the song content because i don't want to get an explicit tag on our uh, podcast uh, however, an explicit tag may actually up our ratings. I don't know, but um, <laughs> can't hurt much. So, okay, yeah, right. You can't hurt. So it's nowhere to go but up, right? So um, anyhow, uh, you should check them out, listeners. You guys should check it out. Uh, you know, however, some may find their content to be offensive. So I will, you know, give that little warning here. Uh, I happen to find it quite hilarious, but again, <laughs> I have a fairly juvenile sense of humor, so that might help too. Uh, so this past week or so, I've been working on a few different things. Um, a lot of it's centered around uh, rhythm guitar, mm -hmm. and particularly blues rhythm guitar, and uh, basically learning some new turnarounds um, to play. So uh, 12 bar blues form bars 11 and 12 are your turnaround and so i might play for example root flat third second flat second back mm -hmm. of the root whatever the case might be you know yeah uh, there's the six two uh five one uh turnaround i think i said that right mm -hmm. yes yeah or actually i guess it's a one six two five is is probably because you start on one on the eleventh bar, yeah, but you assume so, the one. So yeah, you assume the one. But they're right either way, right? And uh, I found a couple others online that I haven't started trying yet, but uh, I've been messing around with those, and I have also started to play um, the intro to Pride and Joy by Stevie. Awesome, and yeah, um, good stuff. Um, trying to watch a video, trying to have this book a tab, and not really pulling it all together, but had a good lesson with my instructor just about a half hour ago mm -hmm. and started to really cement 
the ideas of what needs to be played in this interesting shuffle pattern that involves a lot of muting of the strings with the left yeah. hand. And so, or the fretting hand, I should say, because if you're a left-handed guitar player, then it would be your right hand. But yeah. either way, um, so I th- it's something that when I got this book two years ago was definitely out of my reach, right? Now at my playing, I would say it is within my reach, but I'll have to extend a little further mm-hmm. than, um, you know, than out of my comfort zone, which is good. It's that distance that you want to extend to get better. Yeah. Right. As opposed to just playing something that, you know, you can play if you just sort of remember the notes. Right. Right. So, yeah. So that's largely what I've been working on. A little bit of solo wing stuff, too, but mostly rhythm. And uh, it's pride and joy, really, as an interesting, different rhythm other than the, you know, the chugga chugga rhythm that uh, the typical blues stuff. Yeah. You know, <clears throat> um one of the things is kind of similar between Stevie and, and Jimmy were uh, that kind of, I don't know, controlled chaos of the way their left hand were. I mean, it's, I don't know exactly how to put it, but it's like it seems like they're not like exact because there's a lot of muted strings thrown in there and the whole sound, which was what one of, gave them that really cool, I guess, sort of aggressive sort of sound. Um, and yet – it's muted well. They're not hitting wrong strings. They're not, you know, letting bad notes fly or anything. And so it uh, really it adds to that that whole vibe. Yeah, it's almost like really well done sloppy playing. Yeah. Yes. Exactly the way to put it. You know. Yeah. Except that it's not sloppy, and they no. have this intent, and there's this style to it that it's just really hard to duplicate. Yeah. And the accents on that song too is just like. It doesn't seem intuitive <laughs> when yeah. you start it. So, yeah, it's that's a great song. Yeah, and it's tuned to half step down. Well, yes. I'm too so lazy you, to tune my guitar. You want to be aware of that. Well, <laughs> I take the song and I actually pitched it up to E. <laughs> oh, nice. Nice. That seems like it would be harder than just tuning the guitar down. But You're I don't probably, know. That's just me. With the number of guitars I have, I should just make one the E flat guitar. <laughs> I keep saying that, too. Just, but... <laughs> I don't know which one I'd want to devote to that. But anyway, um, I will tune it down once I start playing with the recording. But right now, I'm a little ways off from playing along with the recording. I need to get uh, up to speed, and that's going to be a while. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be probably a good, solid two weeks of effort on my part to get anything that is resembling... Uh, the recording insofar as you know okay now i can play with the recording as opposed to trying to get the whole technique technique down yeah yeah that's uh even with me being on spring break right now i think it would still take two weeks of uh of effort you know and kids if you're listening and you're in high school take the time to learn the guitar and do oh nothing to play the guitar. I mean, don't say you don't have time to do this because you have tons of time. This is the most time you will ever have in your in life. In your life. It's true. Yes. I mean, and actually when I was in high school, that was, that was about the last time I put in a lot of serious practice. Right. <laughs> but <clears throat> I mean, yeah, I mean, it would be a few hours a day because back then and understand kids back then in a rural area, there was nothing to do. <laughs> I mean, I mean, imagine. So we got four TV stations or five TV stations, and they were like a few of them were copies. So there were three major networks. That's it, you know. So there's nothing on. There was no network. There was no cell phones. There was no. We had video games. If anybody wants to go Google Atari Twenty Six Hundred, that's the kind of video games we're talking. So it's not like you could stick at that for hours anyway. Right. So it's like, wow, uh, guitar, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Absolutely. And, and, you know, and when you're that age, you've got nothing else going on. That's true. Not really. Now, kids, you think you do, but you don't. Right? That's true. You really don't. Will, yes. You will find out. <laughs> and you have the benefit of the fact that your muscles and everything generally do what you tell them to. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Which as you get older, yeah. <laughs> and life creeps in. Yes, you know, that's true. Job, school, work, blah, 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 blah. And uh, yeah, so – so kids, kids take this lesson. Absolutely. Play now while the, you have time. You're the guitar players of the future. Carry on the torch. Yes, that's right. 
<laughs> so anyway, I digress. Why don't we go ahead and uh, talk about your your guitar mutilation? Oh, I don't know if I want to. <laughs> okay, so the long story is, uh, uh, so there's my baby in the background. You can see I put the Seth Bar uh, vibrato back on. I can scoot back there, grab it. And uh, so there's the main vibrato. Stets bar. It re- retrofits a uh, tunomatic style bridge, you know, like a Gibson Les Paul style bridge. Uh, but that's not the the big problem. I, I also got a Floyd Rose. That the idea was the same uh, the same way. They they have this FRX, which is meant to retrofit, so you don't have to do any routing, cutting, anything. You just take off the old parts, put this thing on, and you can revert it back if you want. Problem is, as an import. It's not exactly a Gibson, and although this and the other bridge that were on it fit, you know, or designed to fit Gibson and also fit this, the Floyd didn't. It just wasn't enough, and you can't exactly, you know, metal is metal unless you want to drill it out. I mean, and, which I didn't want to do. So if that goes back. I put this Stets bar back on. In the meantime, I had uh, a, a nut cut when I had the frets done on this guitar, but it started buzzing on the G string, on the open G. And so I'm thinking um, that the G-string cuts into the nut, you know, as you play, as you bend, as you use the whammy bar. Um, and it's not the only nut. I've had a nut do that before. For some reason, the G-string seems to cut more than the other strings, which is weird because it's a, a plain string. And you'd think that one of the wound ones would do a more saw-like action, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, yeah I don't know. But anyway, so it started buzzing. I'm like, okay, enough of this. I'm going to put a locking... Um, locking nut on there. So I had a regular nut and then like a string lock, which, you know, goes behind the nut. Um, so instead I got a locking nut a la Floyd Rose, which just goes and replaces the nut altogether. The problem is there's two little holes in there that you oh, drill yeah. and then you mount them to the neck. The problem is that you can see where the truss rod is. Um, there's a lot of wood missing. <laughs> oh yes, and so uh, I kind of just split the wood a little bit, Uh-oh. and it didn't really hold. Oh. So now I need guitarly.com's help. <laughs> oh, no. I'm gonna take it to Sean and say, "Fix this." <laughs> oh no, <laughs> I know it's it's like you know tail between the legs, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's like, yeah, this is what I did, and it's all my fault, and uh, I need you to get me out of this jam. (laughs) Life's an adventure. You know, you just got to try. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, and hopefully that's fixable. Oh, it's fixable in some way. I mean, I can always put the nut on again and put the string locks back on. I mean, I didn't damage any of that sort of wood. And although it's split and that's annoying, it's really just a slight um, aesthetic thing that'll be covered up by a truss rod cover if I wanted to anyway. So no biggie, but <laughs> yeah. oh yeah, I, you know, and two we should mention that's a hollow body, that's a full hollow body guitar, yes. mm-hmm. and so the Stets bar and all that, you know, it's kind of unclear whether it would take the, the body would take the stress. Yeah, but it seems like it's holding up fine. I mean, it's not in pieces other than the, the headstock. It's not. Yeah, and I've <laughs> I've done the whole hang the guitar by the whammy too, just to yeah. test it. <laughs> sure, sure. Yeah, I you know when you kind of go you know, off a little askew from the normal mainstream, it it becomes difficult, Mm -hmm. you know? I mean, nobody else makes something like this. I wanted a whammy on a fully hollow body, but not a a Bigsby. And it's amazing how hard that is. I mean, there's nothing out there that really works. So you play around. Yeah, and I mean, it's interesting uh, why that might be. And we first speculated that it might be an engineering issue, right? So maybe the the, the full hollow body that that top can't handle the stress. But that's clearly not the case if you're able to to do this to to right. what you've done. Now right. it's also tr- it could be true. I'm not that well versed in the traditional hollow bodies. You know the the big Gibsons and I and the Ibanez, um, you know, emperors and all that. Um, so it may be that the tops on the traditional hollow bodies are thinner than this imported puppy. Oh, and if that's be. the case, that would explain a lot of why they never mount it that way. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know. That's something that we should check out when next we go to some guitar emporium. <laughs> right. That's a good point. Yeah. I mean, because I've definitely gotten a bit more interested in the hollow body since you've gotten your two. Because you have that one and you have one that's red that's very similar to the yeah. guitar that's behind you right now. 
Yes. Uh, and I've definitely liked the sound. been very impressed with how they sound unplugged. They're very resonant, you know, yeah. which is really – and I'll say I probably play unplugged about 80 percent of the time. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so it's nice that it gives you that little feedback, not you know, sonic feedback, but just you get this vibe off of it. And it's really nice, more so even than like the semi hollow bodies, you know, which are nice. I mean, it's a step in that direction. But right. now, of course, there's only so much gain and fuzz you could put on a guitar like this. Although Malcolm Young does a did a really great job with it. Yeah, yeah. I think, I think the Firebird's fully hollow. I'm not sure. I have to look at that. Yeah, I'm not 100 percent sure. I um, and so it's got me thinking whether you know, whenever I'm ready to get another guitar in the future, whether I should be go heading towards the hollow body direction because honestly the direction i was thinking of was another strat but um maybe the hollow body would make sense and then if so i don't know which one i don't want i don't like a big bodied guitar though yeah you so don't want a jazz like, box yeah so something like you have there at court would be probably right up my alley there was a um a dillion dr450 on craigslist in williamsport this past week which but is nice semi, semi. I yep. played one actually out at Schoolhouse Music in Danville and uh, – oh, gave props. They didn't give us any free gear. Darn it. But um, <clears throat> yeah, it's OK. It's not really made to my opinion to the same level of the court or the Samix or some of the other imports. I'm not sure who builds the Dillion. I mean it might be one of them. Um, but it just seems to be kind of a notch down. Not a bad guitar by any means. I don't want to say that. Um, but eh, I wasn't that impressed. Yeah, it's something that I would have maybe checked out if it yeah. were full hollow. But you can uh, get it in a blue flame burst. And that's that's the one that's on sale. <laughs> oh, it's it. you yep, shouldn't have told me one. that. <laughs> yeah, that's the one that's out there. Do I have a need for another beater guitar? <laughs> and it has a case, so, you know. Um, so anyway, um, yeah, I've been. it's been running in the back of my mind as maybe the next target. Although... You know, having a nice black strat is something that I really would enjoy. And I know it's silly to like based on finish, but uh, I don't know. Just Blackie cool. is calling to you. That is that, and it's yeah. been for a while now, actually. It has, and in fact, I've shown a large amount of restraint in not going out and buying one. It's true. Yeah. So, <clears throat> so speaking of you know, shout outs to places where we've had good experiences. I should give a shout out to um, Sweetwater Sound. Um, got a good deal on strings there and uh, wow I mean I, all I did was order strings and I got this really nice folder with an invoice in it and it had candy they gave me candy I was like yes. oh yeah, yeah, they, yeah I, don't, I don't know I was more excited about the candy or the strings to be honest with you <laughs> it's true that's true yeah. so good job guys and they um, they have a really personalized sort of way like you get a uh, your own sales advisor or whatever they call yes. them and um I can't remember the name, my guy's name, or I'd say it, but um, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, they have a really nice. The other thing that's nice about Sweetwater is if you buy a guitar from them, and of course, the difficulty is, you know, when you buy mail order, you don't know what you're getting. And with right. Sweetwater, you don't really know either, although apparently they're supposed to have good quality control, make sure things are set up well when they leave the store. And when you buy a guitar from them, you get pictures to choose from that are the actual guitar you're buying. It's not like a ge generic, you know, some black E strat. I mean, you're, that's the one you're going to get. Yes. Yeah, serial number, all that, mm -hmm. you know, right there. Uh, my sales rep is Jake Lungardner. So Jake, great job with the sales experience on the, um, on the strings. Yeah. I would, you know, I, I'm hesitant to buy a guitar online. Uh, cause I think the guitar is an instrument that, you know, you, you got to play, mm -hmm. uh, to know if it's the one you want. But if I were to get one online, it'd probably be from them. Yeah. Because, it, you know, being able to see the picture. And now that I, I've played guitar long enough, I mean, almost four years at this point, I kind of know if something is like a C-shaped neck, I know what that means. Right. Right. Uh, and, and so these different woods and these different, you know, pickups and all this kind of stuff, I have a good sense of whether or not I'll like it before I even touch it. Right. You know, I don't know if I'll love it, but I'll know if it turns me off. Yeah. You know, uh, so, yeah, I, that would probably be the place I would get one if I were to get one online. Mm -hmm. But still a big fan, though, in person. 
However, Sweetwater, if you want to try to change my mind, you know, I'll take <laughs> free guitars anytime. You know, <laughs> what kind of black strats do you have in stock? <laughs> right, 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 right. All right. Well, with that, we will go ahead and wrap up this episode of Six Strings and Things, a guitar adventure. If you like what you hear, please subscribe. If you don't like what you hear, please subscribe and click the like button. Um, so that we can know that you're listening. <laughs> Feel free to comment on our YouTube channel uh, or our iTunes feed or let us know what we're doing right at SST Show on Twitter. Um, if you let us know what we're doing wrong, please be gentle. And uh, <laughs> of course, you can follow me on Twitter at CWCulp and at uh, and Jesse at Jester700. And until then, just keep picking and grinning. Good night. Six Strings and Things, a guitar adventure, is a production of Jester Cat Studios. You can see more about this and all other Jester Cat shows at jestercat.com. You can also email the show at sst at jestercat.com or continue the conversation on Twitter at SST Show. You can follow Robert at RS Macy, Jesse at Jester 700, and Chris at CW Culp. Thanks to Jesse for playing and recording our intro music. 